Hey all you Notch 6 listeners, before we get to this special episode of Notch 6 from the LCCA convention in Indianapolis, Indiana, I wanted to tell you about two things real quick. Number one, the Madison Poster Company, which is offering the large Lionel Dealer poster recreations. Well, we have a new product for you. We have a smaller version of our D145 Dealer Display poster that just went on sale at madisonposter.com. A much smaller, more affordable version of this poster. It's $99 and it's available at madisonposter.com right now. Go check it out. The other thing I wanted to tell you about is Madison Hardware t-shirts. We mentioned this in the last episode and they are now available for ordering until July 29th only. So you only have a few more days to get your Madison Hardware t-shirt. Part of the proceeds will be donated to the LCCA to help fund activities within the LCCA for kids. To order those t-shirts, teespring.com slash Madison Hardware. That's T-E-E-S-P-R-I-N-G dot com slash Madison Hardware. Shirts start at $23 and you have until July 29th to order them. Thanks so much for listening, guys. We really hope you enjoy this episode of Notch 6 from the LCCA convention in Indianapolis. The following is a production of Notch 6 Media. It's the Notch 6 online podcast, episode number 34. It's night one of the LCCA national convention from Indianapolis, Indiana. It's time to start this week off right. Al Colas from the LCCA will be with us, and Roger Farcash from TW Train Works will be with us to tell us about the new Harry Potter layout they just finished. We'll talk about the LCCA modular layout, some new items there, and we'll talk about what it means to bring new blood into this hobby. It's all ahead. It's night one of the LCCA National Convention from Indianapolis, Indiana, straight ahead on Notch 6. This is the Notch 6 online podcast. Notch 6 is the podcast dedicated to O-Gauge trains. Whether you're collecting, operating, or just getting started, Notch 6 is your home for O-Gauge news, events, and interviews. Now here is your host, Derek Thomas. Well, welcome back to Notch 6 online radio. It's finally here. It's LCCA convention week. And just like last year, I'm proud to welcome in your friend and mine, Al Colas, my co-host, Welcome back, Al. It's, it's hard to believe it's been a year. Thank you again for having us on this um, podcast. We're excited to be here. Uh, we're at the Marriott East Hotel in Indianapolis. Our members are coming in from all over the country. A lot of times this is the first time we'll get to see each other since, since last year. And uh, the excitement's just starting to build. So, uh, first of all, thank you for having us. And uh, we're going to have a great week, and we're very excited. It really is going to be a great week, and you and I were talking before we started recording about it's been a long road to Indianapolis, you know, and and for me, just because this convention is in my backyard, I've spent really, you know, the last 12 months getting excited since we finished up in Chattanooga, and uh, kind of tell me a little bit what about what goes into the planning leading up to the actual event. You guys have been hard at work for months on this thing. Uh, Derek, uh, actually, it's, it's more like... Uh we've been working on it for years now. Um, there's a, it's an extensive process. We have a convention management team. Uh, they first go out and solicit sites, potential cities that have uh, attractions that will be of interest to our members. Uh, then we have to find a property, a hotel property, that uh, can accommodate our needs. We do have some unique requirements as a, as a convention group. So, it's it's a several year process to put this on, but and it takes a lot of volunteers working on it. Um, Indiana Bob Carter, um, the convention manager this year, he's been working on it. Jerry Calkins, the convention co-host, uh, they've been working on the tours. Uh, there's uh, been a whole group of uh, people that are volunteers that are coming in to to spend their vacation time and all to enhance the experience so our members can enjoy the the week long convention. Let's talk about all of the exciting things that are on our plate for this week. So many exciting events. Why don't you just run through a few of them hit and hit the highlights, and we can dig a little bit deeper as the week goes on. Well, well Derek, there's, there's, like you said, there's so many. It's impossible for me to just uh, rattle them off here. But, you know, we're very excited. Um, Lionel is going to be here. Um, they're going to be setting up tomorrow. They're going to be fully operational with their layouts um, from Tuesday through Saturday. So I want to encourage the, the public to come down to the Marriott East Hotel, 
visit with Lionel and experience the magic of Lionel Trains. Uh, we have uh, Roger Farkas of TW Train Works. Uh, he, he's brought his layout here from Dallas, Texas. So, you know, Roger, as you know, is one of the premier layout builders in this country. Uh, he's going to be set up and operational um, Tuesday, as, Tuesday, Tuesday through Saturday as well. So we're going to have tons of, of, of layouts. Uh, basically, our theme for this year is trains, planes, and automobiles. Uh, it's going to be a, a variety of uh, tours throughout the week. Our members come in from all over the country. They're going to be uh, taking on air-conditioned buses and going on different attractions uh, around the surrounding area. We'd like to get a taste and experience the, the, local, um, uh, the local area. Uh, we have a numerous public events that we're inviting people down to the hotel. On uh, Saturday, July, um, Saturday, July 26, from 9 to 3, uh, we have a, uh, an, a free open house trade show, train show. Uh, we're going to have all the layouts going up. We're going to have a Quad City Modular Railroad Group coming here. We have Chicago Land coming in. They're going to have a drag race with, uh, with train engines. So that's all exciting. We're going to have Lionel layout the uh, fast track building competitions for the kids to enjoy it. So come on down to the Marriott East on Saturday and, and have some fun with trains. Uh, the, the, we're accepting donations. It's free admission, but um, donations will be accepted to uh, the benefit of the local Riley, Riley Hospital for Children. Uh, we have other events, like on Wednesday morning, July 23rd, we have the Make-A-Wish Spotlight. Uh, it's LCCA Day in Indianapolis. The deputy mayor is going to be in town. He's going to be designated the um, um, honorary um, uh, engineer for the day, along with three Make-A-Wish families and children. They're going to be designated the honorary engineers. They're going to be at the line layout. They're going to be given the, um, the remote control uh, handheld units, and they're going to be the engineers for the day. On Thursday morning, we have an Autism Awareness Day. Uh, we're having uh, a group of autistic children and their family coming in, and uh, we have a lot of hands-on interactive um, activities. Um, so we'll have on the floor for the, the smaller children, we'll have the uh, Lionel battery-operated sets. Uh, we'll have the, um, the Lion Chief sets that will be set up and operational for the little bit older kids. And then um, we'll, kids can go to the uh, Lionel LCCA Fast Track Modular Railroad Layout uh, with the TW Train Works and uh, operate the conventional transformers. So we, we have uh, something for every age group. Uh, it's going to be hands-on. It's going to be interactive. It's, it's going to be a very worthwhile event. So, you know, we're excited. We like to get the community involved with our activities. Uh, we're going to be planning spe special events after the convention. So we're hoping to have a, a, a regular uh, uh, LCCA uh, events in participation with the community here in Indianapolis. So we're very excited, if you can't tell, by my voice here. It, it is going to be an amazing week, and I like that point that you make at the end, that when an LCCA event comes to town, especially the convention, the goal is to leave a footprint in the city after you leave that there has been enough good done and you have fostered interest in the hobby while you were here, that there's a new group of people interested in Lionel Trains even after you're gone. And I think that's really important to highlight. Thank, thank you, Derek. Uh, again, that's, that's the purpose of our club. Our purpose to, is to promote and foster an interest in Lionel Trains specifically and the toy train industry in general. And uh, we like to walk the talk. People talk about bringing children into the, the hobby. We are doing something about it. And, uh, that's our that's our, our our purpose. Absolutely. Let's look at specifically what's happening tonight for LCCA members as we open this convention. Well, <laughs> LCCA President Dennis DeVito, um, he's a milk and cookie kind of guy. So <laughs> you know, we, we appreciate our members. Um, our members are very loyal Lionel train enthusiasts. They're very loyal and dedicated to the, supporting the LCCA. So. Uh, our members come from all over the country, and they get together and for a week-long um, experience. Uh, they're spending their own money. You know, they don't have companies paying for their trip. Uh, we appreciate them being here. We appreciate them spending a lot of their hard-earned money to, to be there, be here. So um, 
as a way to, to set off, start off the convention, uh, we have a president's reception party, which is basically a milk and cookie social event. It's very casual. Uh, you know, people are just, you know, coming in off the plane. They're, they're just getting grounded. And so we just want to kind of have like a nice little comfort food, you know, milk and cookies and get together and start off the, um, the uh, convention week on the right foot, communicate with, uh, with our members some recent updates and cha- um, uh, updates to the, and changes in the schedule. So, but it, it's, a, it's a good fun event as well. Very good. Well, like I said, we've got an exciting week ahead, and uh, I'm sure we're going to have a lot to talk about as this convention really gets rolling. I'm excited for this week. It sounds like you're excited for this week, and uh, we hope we can pass that excitement on to our listeners as we cover this event from cover to cover the entire week. And for people who are interested in more information on the specific events that are going on or just want more information about the LCCA, check out lionelcollectors.com. Org. That's the LCCA website. You can find a full rundown of events, information on the LCCA, how you can get plugged in with the LCCA, and exciting LCCA events that are coming to your town in the near future. Al, I'm so happy to have you along for another week. We'll catch up with you tomorrow, okay? Thank you, Derek. And uh, again, please encourage people to stop by. We love to, um, We have one rule, and that's to have fun. So please come on by, and let's have some fun with Lionel Train. You're listening to Notch 6 at the LCCA National Convention in Indianapolis, Indiana. Our first guest to the program this time around as we uh, spend some time in Indianapolis, a friend of the program. He's been on the show a few times. Glad to have him back. Roger Farcash from TW Designs or TW Trainworks. You know, the funny thing is, this is the third or fourth time I've had you on the show, and I still can't get TW Trainworks out of my mouth fast enough. <laughs> Roger, welcome back to the show. I'm so happy you're here. Hey, thanks, Derek. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, we're going to hone in on a couple of things this time around, and one of them is the modular layout. The LCCA has done a great job building this program really up from nothing into this idea of people from all over the country being able to create a module and connect their modules no matter where they're at, whether they're in Chattanooga, whether they're in Indianapolis, whether they come to Dallas, they can take their module or they can get together with people locally in their cities, they can get together with people nationally, and no matter where they are, they can build a layout. And this is something that really is is continuing to grow. And uh, tell me a little bit about your involvement and, and how you've seen the program evolve over the past couple of years. Oh, it sure would be a pleasure to share that. Well, uh, when uh, Dennis first approached the board about this whole idea, um, I was very excited about it. And uh, the whole the whole concept of developing standards that uh, really simplify uh, a modular element and utilize fast track, uh, which is let's face it, it's it, it's Lionel's key to uh, all of what's going on in the technology and. Uh, the mass marketing of, of trains, uh, and it works really well. It's a it's a great product, and this was a great opportunity to show it, showcase it in an application that uh, really hasn't been uh, considered much. I had never run into somebody who was making a fast track modular system. You know, doing modules, taking them to the show, and and making it successful. And we got our heads together with a, a great team and came up with what I think is a a great product, a great idea, and something that uh, people can really get into easily. And it's really fun to go to different events and have people show up with uh, modules and hook them up and run trains. And and we're very excited about it. Uh, PW Trainworks has uh, built a module that's uh, about 30 feet uh, by about 20 feet, and uh, it can expand from where it is. But with that simple loop, we have a great basis that – uh, people can attach to, um, or we can just put ours out there and have enough people put up multiple loops. So um, it's a great concept. It's it's a lot of fun, and, and like you say, uh, we can do it everywhere in the U.S. because all the modules are built to a standard, and we just plug them together and play together, and it's <laughs> it can't be more fun than that. One of my favorite stories to tell, and I think this kind of uh, – exemplifies the simplicity of these modules is last year when we got together at the Lionel service headquarters, you brought the, the modular railroad out and we set this up under a tent in the Lionel parking lot. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, when it was time to tear down 
and there were there were a couple of other modular layout groups there. Uh, wh- which group was done first, Roger? Who, whose group was that? <laughs> <laughs> it was the Lino modular layout, man. It, it's too simple. It is too simple. You know, the only thing that um, you can make complicated is what you put on top of it. Uh, but if every you have a large group of people that are coming and they're bringing one module each, um, you can pretty much have a full setup. It's all ready to go. Take it out of the car, set it in place, and and run trains. Uh, it's only when, like when we have a, our big display, we have to take the modules off just for simplicity in terms of trucking it, you know, all across the country. But even then, uh, every everything has its place, uh, and it's very easy to set up. It's really even quicker to come down. Uh, up and down, we usually take maybe maybe two hours to put it up. And, you know, half hour, 45 minutes, we're down and, and ready to go. So um, too much fun. <laughs> it's it's a really slick setup, and uh, I hope you'll check out the photos of these modules on the LCCA website and uh, the TW Trainworks Facebook page. Both have great photos of how these modules come up and go down. It really is a slick setup, Absolutely. and, uh, you know, we, we could talk about that forever. You're bringing two new modular sections to this show that are debuting at this show. Tell me a little bit about those modules. Well, uh, before Luca Pony passed, uh, he, he and I had had a number of conversations uh, that he wanted to build two modules, and he wanted me to build them for him. And we threw all kinds of ideas around, and we were it was a work in progress when he became really ill. And unfortunately, we never got to the point where he decided what he wanted, but uh, I know that he's up there watching right now saying, you have my blessing to put this together this way because this is fine. And uh, I think uh, people are going to enjoy it. It's still a work in progress, um, and that's the way it should be because that's the way he, that's the way Lou was. You know, he's always tinkering with it a little bit, twisting it a little bit. You know, getting a little more power out of that that engine. So uh, we're we're having fun with it, and I think people are going to enjoy seeing him. What are some of the scenery elements that, for the people that aren't on the convention, go on to those those two modules that that Lou wanted to see? Well, we've uh, got two main elements. Uh, one is the uh, Lionel nuclear reactor, and another one is a uh, big shop, a workshop, uh, where uh, we have uh, local Louis uh, model trains and hot rod repair. So it's a, it's a unique combination, and uh, again, I think it's uh, going to be fun for people to see it and uh, get to push the buttons. Absolutely. One of the other things that I want to talk to you about, and this is such a big part of the LCCA and these conventions is bringing new blood into this hobby. And every time you and I talk, this is something that you are incredibly passionate about. You care about the future of this hobby more than most people I know. Let's talk about how these conventions bring new blood into the hobby. Where do do we start bringing new people in, in your opinion? Well, I think that one of the the one one of the most wonderful things that the LCCA does is is how we promote the hobby in each city that we go to. It's it's not a matter of just touching with our members and saying, hey, show up. This is going to be a great convention. Have fun. We've got great tours. We've got great places to see. Uh, we're at a great hotel. All those wonderful things that make the uh, convention fun are are super for the visitors. But more importantly, we make sure that we get the layouts up. We have Lionel there. Um, We have things for the local people to get involved with from as as quickly as we can. And and this year, the second day, we're going to be up and running so that people can come in and see trains, see what it's all about, see what it's about uh, to be an LCCA member, but most importantly is how we have fun with trains. And, uh, you know, you have met Dorsey and I, and we've talked many times, and, and you know that that's what we're about. It's um, uh, getting those layouts out there for people to enjoy. That's why we bring uh, a layout all the way up from Dallas to Indiana to see uh, how people react to what we're doing and how they enjoy, uh, especially the kids. I mean, when the, <laughs> those trains come around the corner and those whistles are tooting and the bells are ringing, uh, those kids are jumping up and down. It's it's too exciting, and it, it, that's what it's all about for us. I know what the joy was for me as a child, and I know that how it's brought me a life life lifetime of happiness, and that's what I want to continue to share in in, in any way I can. And and the LCCA is a wonderful wonderful means to do that. 
what is it about these large train layouts that just absolutely captivates people? Can you kind of help explain that? Well, you know, I, yes, the scale is important in terms of how impressive it is, but I think just the um, detail, the amount of detail, the interaction that uh, people include on the layouts uh, are, are what really captivates the kids. When they see these trains running around in front of them on different layers, different heights across bridges and rivers and mountains, uh, it, it's fascinating. And it's that you get transported to another world. It doesn't matter where it's set up, you know, whether it's in a store or a convention hall or, or a museum, um, they're they're mesmerized by the trains going in circles in these little worlds that uh, they can relate to. You know, it's it's the big world that we all live in is really overwhelming, and even for the biggest one of us kids, when we're playing with the trains, it's our world. You know, we immerse ourselves in it. It's in it's in a scale that we can relate to. It's something that we can handle. We control. We run and stop the train. Um, how many times in the rest of the world do we get that kind of control? You know, we know we put who we want on the on the display. We have them doing things that we want them to do. Um, it's it's magical, and it's something that uh, any kid with any kind of imagination, the littlest bit of imagination, the younger the better, they get excited about it. And the more they see it, the more they enjoy it, um, the more involved they're going to become. I think the neat thing about toy trains, and I think the word here is it creates an experience. From day one, if you go back to the to the early 1900s all the way to today, toy trains has always been about creating a world and creating an experience. And I think maybe that's something that we've lost along the way or the people that have been involved in the hobby for a long time. Maybe we lose some of that magic along the way of this is about – having somebody step in really and and you relate well to this stepping into a theater we are creating a theater of the mind Mm -hmm. the stage is a lot smaller but it's a big world we're creating on a small stage and and i think it's it's good to remind people of that every once in a while oh absolutely absolutely i think that the most successful um toy train shops that are out there are the ones that really create an experience when you walk in the door they create an environment for that happiness and that joy. Um, you know, Lionel, from the very, very early years, required their dealers to have a train layout. And it was not some, uh, well, yes, it is, <laughs> some self-serving uh, reason. But there's the, the more important thing is that self-serving reason was for a very specific um, uh, need that they saw in terms of making sure that you conveyed the magic of what these trains are. And, and the more successful the store, I think, from what I've seen, has always been the owners are committed to creating that experience. They put together layouts, they change their layouts, they enhance their layouts, they invite kids in to play with the trains. It's not a hands-off thing. You know, the worst thing you could do is create a train layout, put a train on it, and then tell the kids, don't touch the trains, right? <laughs> I mean, right. What, 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 where is it going to go for, where is it going to go from there? When you invite them in to play with the trains, when you hand them the controllers, and, and God bless Lionel, I mean, that is one of the most exciting things of what they're doing in terms of advancing their technology is making it easier and easier to get those controllers in the hands of the kids. The whole new Lionel Chief, all of that is about getting the controllers into the hands of the kids and making it easier for them to play trains, making a, a broader experience, the sounds, the, the, the control that they have, opening and closing the couplers, blowing the whistles, ringing the bells. That's it. <laughs> That's playing <laughs> with the trains. It's not just watching it go in a circle. And, um, again, I think that the more... You see shops where you're creating these environments for people to experience the pleasure of playing with trains, the more this hobby is going to grow. One of the areas that I'm really excited to talk about this week is Mr. Muffin's Trains, which we're going to talk about this more later in the week. But if you want to talk about a, <laughs> you want to talk about a shop that's got it right. It's a train layout first. It's a hobby shop second. And you got to see it firsthand last night. And yeah. we're going to talk about it more this week. But what were your initial impressions of that layout in that shop? 
No, it, it, when you say it's a layout first and hobby shop second, you're, you're right on target because you walk in the door and you cannot miss the immensity of this layout, the presence of this layout. I mean, you walk, you walk through the door and that's what it's about. And, and it's mesmerizing. You know, you just get sucked right into it. And they've done such a wonderful job of putting the product uh, in terms of on display, on the layout, where it becomes a part of the whole experience. Uh, and then if you're interested in the layout, oh, yeah, I mean, you're interested in the product. Yeah, it's over here. You know, it's on the sides. But the focus right. is the product being utilized, the product being played with. And, and it is multi-level, multi-layered. It's, it's got everything. And I tell you what, this layout encourages you to play with your trains hard. I, I, I read a, a little blurb on the TW Trainworks Facebook page uh, this morning that uh, there, were, there were a couple of incidents last night, maybe, maybe some train wrecks possibly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, they're, they uh, – the layout is so big that if you're if you're not concentrating and watching the train that you're running, that can happen. Now I wasn't running trains at the time. Uh, I was enjoying the scenery, but uh, that that can happen. Uh, nothing serious. Uh, didn't get anything I, off the tracks. <laughs> I will I will be the first one to admit that I rear-ended the coal train running on that layout and probably put a good twenty to thirty cars on the ground. So oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah. So now, when I say on the ground, I say on the layout. I did not bounce them off of Steve's floor. Oh, very so. good, very good. <laughs> it, it's an amazing layout. Like I said, we'll get into that a little bit more later in the week. One of the last things I want to talk about before we let you go is something that you guys have been working on and just finished up the install on. Since we're talking about creating an experience, let's talk about this new Harry Potter themed layout that you guys just uh -oh. finished. What yeah. what a layout! Tell me tell me a little bit about how this concept came about, some of the design elements that went into it, and uh, just kind of give me an overview of the project. Well, it's actually uh, came as a, a phone call on uh, New Year's Eve. Now you think that I would be going home and celebrating on New Year's Eve, but Dorothy and I uh, uh, run our business, and uh, we were taking care of business on New Year's Eve, and we get a phone call at the end of the day, and it's Jerry Calabrese uh, with a could you build a layout for a friend in uh, Los Angeles? And I said, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, uh, that was the beginning of what is now a very exciting, uh, delightful relationship with a gentleman who had us build a uh, Harry Potter-themed layout for his uh, uh, sons. And it's, um, it's uh, an amazing layout, very interactive. Um, it actually has pop-up units that go into uh, Hogwarts Castle, into the Great Hall, and uh, another one that goes into the middle of uh, London and uh, Diagon Alley, and uh, it's it's just too much fun. The kids uh, and the family walked into the room, and they their jaws dropped on the floor, their eyes popped out of their heads, and it was uh, an exciting reveal, an exciting display. So, uh, very happy family uh, enjoying their trains, that's for sure. Those kids must have gone nuts when they saw that layout. I mean, what, you, you said it was a good reaction. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, the um, uh, family came in, and everybody just, oh, wowed, and uh, ran up to the layout and started uh, climbing around and climbing under and up inside. And uh, we gave them controllers right away, and they started running trains. And, uh, it, it circles uh, the wife asked me to take her around and show her every aspect of the layout and uh, made the comment it's a work of art and uh, we we appreciate that because you know our tagline experience the art of the train and uh, she sure got it that's for sure that's really cool let's talk a little bit I, I'm just curious from the technical standpoint with a family that is is being introduced to a really large layout and may not necessarily be a train family uh, is the control system on their legacy are you guys running lion chief for the kids I mean how, how did that work out with with teaching a, a family that's relatively new to the toy train hobbies about controlling those trains well we actually have a number of different loops of track uh, the smallest loop of track is a very uh, simple conventional loop uh, that we're running the uh, uh, Thomas uh, trains on. And, uh, again, using the Lion Chief Thomas, so it's very easy to control. Uh, everything else is set up with uh, Legacy, um, and we've simplified all of that by uh, including Lion Chief 
and a combination of legacy, some of the, the higher end pieces, so everybody can uh, run all of the different types of lining up trains on the track using the legacy system as the, the core for it all. Uh, there's uh, four layer, four loops of track, um, and um, again, multiple layers. Uh, we have um, uh, King's Cross Station for the, the whole story to start with. Uh, well, we actually started with uh, Privet Road with the uh, home of uh, Harry Potter. Uh, but the uh, uh, different aspects of the story are included in the layout, and um, uh, everybody has fun running trains. Very cool. And, and another just technical question, that, uh, and something I need to mention here, is if you want to see photos of this layout, TW Train works on Facebook. These guys do an incredible job of posting pictures. That and the Train Dame blog, you need to go check out pictures of this layout because, I mean, it's one thing for Roger and I to talk about it. It's a whole different thing for you guys to be able to see it. So TW Train works on Facebook, the Train Dame blog, if you want to see pictures of this Harry Potter layout. Okay, back to my technical question. Obviously, uh, what are the overall dimensions of the layout kind of and – Minimum curve, well, I should say maximum curve radius. I mean, are there some room to squeeze some bigger locomotives onto this layout? Yeah, absolutely. The outer loop is actually, um, uh, let's see, we've got uh, 72. We have uh, actually 84. So we've wow. got um, the largest loop on the outside. Uh, the dimensions are essentially 30 feet long and uh, 12 feet wide. It's kind okay. of a uh, peanut-shaped uh, layout. We um, incorporate a, a deep valley. Uh, with lots of those uh, uh, English stone arch bridges and um, lots of uh, English countryside. And then, of course, the uh, Hogwarts Castle and all the elements that are included with that, including the Hogsmeade Station and uh, uh, Haggard's Hut. Uh, there's a dragon uh, on top of the tunnel. There's a sorcerer's head that is a tunnel. Um, it, it's just a lot of fun. Very cool. So it's not completely out of the question to see uh, Harry Potter riding around on a Vision Line big boy sometime in the future. <laughs> yeah, I think that'll happen for sure. I know that the <laughs> Polar Express will be running at Christmas time. Very, very cool. One more thing before we go that we always want to talk to you about is the TW Train Works Layout Festival. Is it happening this year? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a little bit later, September 27th. Uh, that's a Saturday. It, it also just happens to be the opening of the Great State Fair of Texas, which is the largest, longest state fair in the United States. So uh, if you're planning on coming from out of town, we're giving you two reasons to uh, be in Texas that weekend. But uh, September 27th, we'll have a jazz band again, uh, food trucks out in the parking lot, um, lots of fun, raffles, uh, dealers are going to be there. Uh, we're going to have uh, reps from Lionel, BNSF, uh, Ronald McDonald, the House of Dallas is again the people that were doing all this. Uh, we're going to benefit those uh, wonderful folks there. Um, we should have uh, close to a dozen displays up and running, so it should be a lot of fun. In fact, uh, we'll have the um, uh, Lionel Grand Central Terminal uh, layout in for some refurbishment, so that's an exciting plus. Oh, cool. Very, very cool. So make your plans now for the end of September to head down to Dallas and check out the TW Train Works Layout Festival. Roger, always a pleasure. Great to hear there are exciting things going on for you guys. Remind everybody what your website is. Sure. It's um, TW Train Works, and that's W-O-R-X dot com. Very good. Roger, we look forward to catching up with you all this week. Thanks for the time, and uh, we'll see you around the convention hall. Derek, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. Well, that's going to do it for night one here at the LCCA National Convention in Indianapolis. Hope you guys enjoyed the show tonight. We have so many great things in store for you this week. I hope you'll join us every evening. A couple of quick programming notes. This show is out a little bit earlier. Uh, obviously, it's it's early evening, and the show's out you know early tonight. The, the rest of the week, it's going to be, we're going to try and have it out by 7 o'clock Eastern every night. Some nights are going to be hit or miss. Tomorrow night, I think, is going to be a little bit later than 7. It really just depends on how long it takes us to get with the people that we want to talk to because, obviously, we want to bring you the best interviews that we can in the amount of time that we have. So I'm going to say 7 to 8 o'clock Eastern every night is when the show will hit the website at notch6.com. Follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash notch6. I'll be posting photos all week and, and updates where I need to. 
lot of great things in store this week. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow from Indianapolis on Notch 6. Thanks for listening to Notch 6, the only podcast dedicated to O-Gauge trains. You can find every episode on our website, Notch6.com, or on iTunes and Stitcher. We'll see you again soon. Until then, be sure to keep it in Notch 6. The following has been a production of Notch 6 Media and is intended for private use only. This show may not be copied or redistributed without express written consent. This show copyright 2014, all rights reserved.